No, that enthusiasm seems to be spent on his time with us. How are you and Belinda getting along? She's a good girl. Okay, one sec guys, I need to get my blanket. Cause it's getting cold. I should probably, you know, just shut the porch door. But, blanket's softer. <laughs> okay. There we go. Wonders of a wireless headset. Belinda? This is the same Belinda, right? She is! She's got a thick and spiky shell. But underneath it, she's just a girl who did never expect to be here. She's Oop. actually quite... She is! Sorry about she's that. She's got a thick and spiky shell, but underneath it, she's just a girl who did never expect to be here, let alone be here for as long as she has. She's actually quite sweet. Now I'm convinced Hector found a way to manipulate people's minds. <laughs> Kalfnod laughed. <laughs> No, I think that a few months spent with each other is enough to help you recognize the good parts of others and to have them grow on you. Alphanon gestured with a uh, uh, Alphanon gestured with a plan as he smiled. Speaking of spending time, how much more time will Heck need you? Later today is our last session, actually. Ash raised her eyebrows. The coincidences will never cease, eh? Do you want to attend the ritual? There's a lot of people who have heard about it. Even a few graduates have returned to the mountain to attend. Oh, it's gonna end disappointingly, isn't it? Um, yes, actually. I'd like to actually see what you have been working on. You should bring one of your plants. Mr. Warlock would light like a pyre. Light like a pyre? Uh, it means to get excited. Witches used to have rituals where the very skilled among us would be burnt on a pyre. Explain more, please. What? There were components to protect them from the flames. I don't really know how it worked. I wasn't much of a witch, if you remember. That sounds terribly useful. Immunity to flames? I don't even know if it was those particular flames, or flames in general might have even been an illusion. No one did the ritual while I was there. Ash found her stomach rumble. I think I need to get some food. I will go with you. Bring a plant. I'm heading to training right after. He <laughs> just wants you to bring those plants everywhere. Sure. Ash chose a pot in which it nestled a tiny, li tiny black bush with a rose as dark as ink. Let's go. The two wove through the catacombs of the mountain and found their way to the kitchen. Outside, spattered across the tables that served as dining room, the few remaining morning, morning stragglers finished their meals. I would be in that group. <laughs> At one, Ash found Blinda sitting across from Hector and Prude. Ash grabbed a bowl of uh, what a bowl? <laughs> no, a bowl of the stew proffered by the tall and thin cook who stood behind the counter, he gave her a wide grin and a second helping. I didn't see you yesterday. You can't skip meals. Ah, oh, thanks. Knowing that this person was worrying about her made her feel oddly content. She joined the group a moment later. Hey, gang. She might as well try to play nice. She missed Prudence. We're a gang now? Ooh, I wasn't aware we were participating in illegal activities. <laughs> no, Hector. The comment garnered a laugh from the group, and Prude lay her head on Hector's shoulder. I honestly don't know if you're joking or asking, and somehow that makes it funnier. And the thing is, he's there's probably something illegal gone on at some point. The only thing criminal is the amount of studying I have done over my winter break. I assure you, there is no legal limit to studying, else I would have found it. Belinda groaned, but her face brightened when Elfnard arrived behind Ash. Mind if we join you? Please, have a seat. Where have you been? I swear, I haven't seen you in what must have been months. I kind of got caught up in my research. Is that why you have that rose? Hector's eyes widened. Did you figure it out? Can I see it? <laughs> you got creepy again. Ash offered the small pot, and Hector took it with a care one might... Handed the most fragile glass. Oh my. 
Hector went silent as he buckled over the plant. Well, I hope you didn't need to talk to him. He's going to be silent for the next half an hour just looking at it. Just a half hour? Prude gave the plant a glance herself. Reanimation? Yeah. I thought you had to have your pair to perform reanimation. There haven't been many tests to determine the range at which a pairing can share magic. Yeah, I estimate the upper limit is outside of any reasonable test range. Huh. Oh, he's actually paying attention- Wait, what? Yeah, I estimate the upper limit is outside of any reasonable test range. Oh, oh that's it. Oh. Oh, he's actually paying attention. <laughs> I know better than to ever completely ignore you. Aw, that's sweet. Ash was surprised how little it bothered her to see Prude kiss Hector on the cheek. Time is the greatest of healers. Which, that contradicts the phrase, time makes your heart grow fonder, but whatever. What was that? Nothing. <laughs> Looking across the table, she found surprise elsewhere, catching Belinda lay moon eyes on Elfnod. That couldn't end well. So, what was the trick? Trick? I mean, how did you do it? I'm still a little bit shocked he's actually talking. There wasn't a trick. I had to completely develop a new spell type. Would you be willing to teach it to me? I might as well learn it too, if you're offering. <laughs> oh, Belinda. I think I want to do some more research before I start sharing the spell. Ash braced herself, expecting Hector to refuse such a flimsy excuse. Instead, he nodded. I understand. Just tell me if you need help. Sure. Thanks. See, Hector isn't the worst, he just has problems. So, Elfie, are you ready for the ritual? Elfie. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, of course. What's so special about your session today? Elfnod said something about performing a ritual? That's because we are. We're actually going to be performing the pairing ritual. Ash's eyes grew wide. Ugh, don't worry, they've actually done it twice before. And while they weren't well trained enough to complete it successfully, they were not compatible. I imagine the heads would attempt to stop me were they to think I would be creating pairs outside of the early ritual. Hector, Warlock, what did I tell you about the heads? Hector turned from the plant and blushed. Treat my elders with more respect. <laughs> oh. Yes, now stop acting like you intend to overthrow the orders little bit too much has like not hesitation but stops uh, yes no you are right i am sorry prude gave ash a wink apparently she had tamed the savage beast not that i couldn't if i wanted to <laughs> there he is hector screamed to the hall in general mostly tamed at least Ash finished her stew and let it outside. She hadn't been eating properly, and the extra serving had helped. The cook had been disturbingly observant sometimes. For a moment she wondered if there was a magic to cooking, and perhaps the head cook mistress Gasthund was some sort of head herself. Ash diminished the idea and watched as Hector finished his third bowl. Looks like everyone is here. Should we head straight to the garden? Can I keep the flower? Sure. I will call it... George. <laughs> Perfect. You don't need to name plants, Heck. <laughs> yes, you do. George! What? <laughs> What's the point? Mostly tamed. <laughs> How come I'm feeling that was just the voice actor messing around and they're like, yes, keep it, please. I shouldn't need to tell you what to do. Begin. Belinda took in a deep breath, and for a moment the garden hung in silence. Even after having been told, Ash was surprised to see she wasn't the only spectator. There were at least another two dozen students, and judging by the few pairs sticking to back, at least two graduates. Elfnod flared with such an intense flaming white light that a gasp ran through the crowd. The amount of power he produced easily rivaled that of any graduate, and somehow that made Ash flushed with pride by proxy for a friend and recent confidant. Belinda took another deep breath, but nothing happened to her. Elfnon light began to pour forth, beginning to bridge the distance between him and Belinda. 
Hector's face was bleached by the light as his eyes started wildly and he silently moved mouth something. Belinda's third breath seemed to tear shadows from the earth beneath her, coiling up and around with a tendrils of pitch darkness. Oh, it's so pretty. Extending a hand, the tendrils coiled around her arm and reached outwards. Ash was shocked that two months ago these two had been rem remedial students. The this control of the energy showed an amount of techniques reserved for the likes of heads. As soon as the two touched, there was a flare and an explosion. She had been prepared. Prude and Hector had warned her to brace herself, though they had not provided the luxury of that warning to any of the other attendants. While the rest of the crowd were drawing themselves back to their feet, Hector looked over the pair with a smile of satisfaction. 8,312 meters. Would you mind explaining exactly how you calculated that? Came a voice from the crowd. A commotion began to rise before a sudden bark of excitement broke over the noise. I have a mark! Oh no. Silence fell like a hammer. What? <laughs> that would probably be my reaction. Elf and I turned to Ash with a grin and revealed a black flower in the back of his hand. Rather pretentious, no? Belinda was beside him in a moment, showing Ash the same mark. You have to teach me your spell now! It's fate! The two exchanged hands, looking at each other's marks. Their eyes met, and they smiled. Well, Ash, we should probably pack. We're going to be thrown out. Run, run, run! Ash looked for Hector, already gone from where he, was, he had stood before. Where did Hector go? I told him under no circumstance would he be allowed to overthrow the orders, and that when we got thrown out, we had to leave. He said he needed to pack. <laughs> you guys are running. Do you need anything specific from your room? No, not really. I have everything I really need memorized. Clothes, I suppose? Me. My mother will buy us some new equipment. Ash watched as a number of the students began to retreat, fear on their faces. The graduate pair from earlier was gone. Do you have any idea of what you have done? The voice from earlier. Ash looked for its origins, finding a thin woman bearing down the retreating Hector. The ramifications of this are far beyond any of your earlier antics. Nissa, this is not the time. I am sure you think this will be seen as a good thing, but your variation of the ritual will be far from it. You look like a cobra. The ease with which your ritual can be performed will create situations where casters, entirely unprepared to become a mage, will pair. The kind of power gained through a pairing will create pseudo-mages with far more power than training. I think we may be able to prevent this kind of behavior in the mountain, but can't you see? Nissa, stop. The woman glared, remaining silent for a moment. Hector used the moment of silence to continue his retreat, and less time than it took her to continue her tirade, he was gone. Fool. Nissa spoke as she watched him go. With narrowed, predatory eyes, she turned to meet the gaze of Ash. A shiver ran on Ash's spine as their eyes met, and she quickly turned away to let out a short string of obscenities over the shiver. Did she need to wear more layers or something? This was getting ridiculous. When Ash turned back, she saw Nissa was marching towards her purpose in her movements and expression. No, she was mistaken. She wasn't coming to her, she was coming to. Prude, is it? Prudent Celeste. Royal Princess and heir to the Celeste Throne. That's right. Hmm. I cannot determine from what little I know of you why you might be paired to someone like him. You certainly don't appear to be cut from the same cloth. How can you- Perhaps it's a situation of opposites attracting. You're paired under the mark of the spider, no? Which one of you is a spider, and which is caught in the web, I wonder? Ash readied herself for a shiver, and was pleased to find that it didn't come. She silently celebrated a victory as she continued to watch the interaction. Not the time, Ash. Neither. 
Mark reading is purely nonsense. More importantly, who are you? This is Nyssa. She's a graduate from the same class as Hector. Ah, and you are? Ash. A woman's eyes snapped back to Ash, now gleaming with recognition. Ash tried to casually hide her hand behind her back. Niss Nissa nodded curtly, looking away. Ash here is correct. I was in Hector's class. I graduated as a poison and venom specialist. Were it not for Hector, I would have been top of my class. I would have been the top of any class in the last ten years, if not for him. It is hard to believe he still performed so well amidst his... Hm. How shall we say? Antics. You just have one giant spoon that's... That I... Blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Antics? It's hard to believe his reputation is not so well remembered. Likely for the best. Ash waited for Nyssa to explain far further, but she merely grew silent instead. Venom and poison specialist, how is that useful? Hmm. An ignorant question. Surely you are aware that most mundane medicines are a poison of one sort or another, if used improperly. The same holds true for poisons. In the appropriate application of a venom or poison, one can heal. My partner is a masterful healer. Combined, I would argue we are the most prominent healers on the continent. Isn't Hector a knock specialist? Doesn't that mean he has the same speciality as you? Hissa tried to hold back a scowl. Admittedly, in a way he does. But claiming to be a knock specialist is like claiming to be a magic specialist. It is claiming specialization in an enormous category. It's a ridiculous title. That having been said, I have no doubt that given whatever he is, he could replicate what I do and more. What he is? I... I should not have said that. It was rude of me. You intended to. As the din of the crowd grew, Nyssa looked about, then looked back to Ash. I must take my leave, as, huh, enlightening as this was, I would rather not suffer the fallout due from the heads. She slinked away, a shape half hidden behind the pillars of the courtyard, falling into step immediately behind her. Scanning the pillars, Ash realized with a start that the cook from earlier was there, the one who had given her an extra helping. The cook's eyes fell not on the flesh, fresh pear, nor on Prude, but on herself. She started towards him, but the crowd broke her line of sight, and in the faintest flutter of her heartbeat, he was gone. Ash wheeled around, trying to follow the boy's path. How long do you think before the heads show up and kick us out? Uh, now. Ash turned to Elfnon and Belinda, who was still speaking with joint enthusiasm. Oddly appropriate that the oldest students should end up paired. I doubt much longer. As through, though life was some cosmic play, and the words were an actor's cue, the heads arrived. Where is he? <laughs> Ash had never seen such rage in Luciana. She had always been the voice of reason between the two. Zachariah was manic in the sense she was actually smiling. You! What are you doing here? To your room! She shouted at a passing student observer. You! Luciana's eyes locked with Ash. Somehow I feel I should have known you were a part of this. What did Ash do? I am sorry for your issues with your mark, but you cannot be involved in things like this. You must leave immediately. What did Ash do? Luciana's head snapped to prudence. Sakurai stepped towards the group, particularly cooing as she spoke. Hector is to be punished when we catch him. We will strip him of his magic. As his pair, you will suffer the same fate. I doubt you're allowed to do that to the princess of a kingdom. No, Zachariah! We cannot do so much, not to her! No, you cannot. Hector had returned, though from where he had come, Ash could not say. 
A backpack and a sword that pained Ash's eyes, shimmering either white or black as the light struck, was all he carried. You dare to bring such a thing here? Hector slid the blade free, held his point directly at Zachariah. You touch her and you will see exactly how much I dare. Venom dripped from his every syllable with a no noxious toxicity, toxicity that seemed to leave the air stained with malice. Hector, let's get out of here! Good idea, good idea. We're coming too. Yeah! You steal our students now, Hector. Do you truly intend to try to overthrow the orders? Boy, you think yourself strong, but you have no concept of the true power we hold. That sounds ominous. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Believe me, girl, it is. I do not boast, but Hector, we have never really tried to harm you. Do not doubt we could. I have no interest in your order anymore. There is so much more out there, up there. I am done here. For a moment, they all merely stood. Ash readied herself for the coming fight. Instead, Zachariah turned away, slowly. Get out! Now! A glow began to burn within her. Ash felt it as much as she could see it. <laughs> Enhancement magic. Is that all of which a head is capable? Hector, not the time. I will snap you in half, boy. I would love to see... He did not finish his words as pre... Prude gagged him finally and began to lead the small party's retreat. <laughs> We're leaving. Thank you, heads. <laughs>